What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a final look. It's finally here at Everspace 2 and as you've no doubt noticed by the title, I am so very excited about this open world sci-fi action RPG. The first Everspace remains, in my personal opinion, one of the finest roguelites ever made so long as you don't mind the fact that it can get a tiny bit repetitive. Like, that's really its only major flaw, was replaying through the beginning to get to the cool stuff near the end when you're in that final 10-yard line of finishing the game. It got a little repetitive for me, but I loved Everspace. Loved it to death. Don't have really many complaints about it. Everspace 2, they decided to cut out in a different direction. They decided to make an open-world action RPG. And so if you're a fan of Freelancer, if you're a fan of space mining, if you turn out to be a fan of things like, you know, moving objects like clothing and whiskey around for profit, if you like bounty hunting, if you like building up a space station, making friends, a large, sprawling, epic narrative, Everspace might be the game for you. And we're going to take a look at it here today because it is no longer in early access. Uh, we'll probably play for about 45 minutes. I'll do my best to give you my thoughts about the things I like and the things I don't like. I haven't played this game. You can check my last video. I haven't played this game in like two years. I knew very early on in Early Access that I was going to be excited about this game. So I kind of embargoed it and did not play it at all. I've played for about an hour to an hour and a half just to get us to where we are in this video so that we've got a little bit of an action sequence going on. We've got some activities to get under, and we're not just going through the tutorial again, which was largely unchanged from the last time we covered the game. But on the day this video goes live, I am going to be streaming this game for like four hours, and it's probably the game I'll be playing for the rest of the week. So I definitely recommend you swing on through my Twitch stream. It's going to be a ton of fun. The link is down below in the description. You'll also find a link to the game down there just in case you wanted to get it for yourself. But let's dive on in. Let's have some space adventures. Adventures. Space adventure time! So what are we doing right now? Well, this game is a continuation of the storyline from the first game, but I am happy to report that you don't really need to know the storyline of the first game. The storyline of the first game is roughly that you are a clone of like a legendary pilot, and you are using his skills as his clone and your inability to die because of the cloning vats. Uh, to basically resolve intergalactic crises. In this game, you have retired from kind of like the backstabbing, the intrigue, and the space battle fights uh, to become a bodyguard for miners, and your old nemeses have accidentally found you through a series of accidental events. And right now, I've been picked up by a guy who's talking right this second, uh, and he has a old pirate base that he's cleared out and is renovating basically to be his base of operations and the reason he doesn't get found is because he has these things called bean bags that he has placed all over the system that act as kind of like clandestine signal jammers and so anyways i'm reactivating those right now so that the bad guys won't find our main character and then liquefy him because he knows things about military secrets from his previous memory that are bad news for everybody uh, the game is wonderfully voice acted. Uh, there is tons of voice acting in this game. There is tons of dialogue. There are full animated sequences that happen at various storyline portions of the game, uh, just like there were in the first game. For all intents and purposes, I've found that so far in the first hour and a half or so, this seems to be a very high quality experience. Now, with regards to the flight model, the game is a bit arcadey. So if you're looking for something that's got like a super, oh my God, what did I just do? Did I break something? Oh, it's mines. There's mines everywhere. I didn't realize that there was mines all over the place. Okay, uh, but the flight model in this game. The flight model in this game is largely arcadey. Uh, it's gonna. It's not going to be a real heavy-handed flight model like you see in a lot of other games uh, where they want you to feel that kind of clunk and that thump of moving big analog, you know, uh, levers and doing something like an aileron is, like, really complicated and takes a lot of practice. Uh, this game... Super, super simple arcadey controls. However, there is a great deal of customization you can do with your ship. I've played for an hour and a half, and I think I've seen no less than like seven or eight different gun types so far. And all of the weapons in this game have a little bit of like a Diablo thing going on where they can have random affixes on them. They can come in various qualities. And so 
the gear hunt in this game is going to be one of those things that might tie people down. This right here is the equipment log for our ship. We've got everything from guns to missiles to sensors to shields uh, to consumables and things that we can use inside of our backup bay. We've got our attributes over here, and as we upgrade the base that we operate out of, we can upgrade these attributes further outside of our leveling process. If we go over to here, uh, we can fix up the space station from this area to get new perks, and every single character you unlock will be able to fix certain things at the space station and then give you perks that go along with that. And so there's a lot of crafting, there's a lot of building in this game. It's all handled via menus, like you don't actually have a base that builds up from what I've seen so far and gets larger. But uh, you do get pretty sweet perks from it, like paying a lot less for repairs. Looks like we got a pirate base over here. I just, I am not looking, I'm not liking the look of that minefield over there. It looks like they do have a rigged up asteroid on that side. So let's go see every single area in this game for like missions and otherwise. They are free roam areas that have loads and loads of things inside of them. You might find other quests. Uh, you might find locations where you can harvest crafting materials. You may find big fights that you can get involved with. Do I have to like turn these on or something? What are these? Ah, detonator. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Run away. Oh, do I have to, like, activate all the charges in, like, five seconds? I think I do. Okay, so let's give it a run, then. I bet we can do it. Let's see here. Where are the other ones at? There's one right there. And then where are the other ones? There's one right there. We got that one. I don't see another one. Oh, there it is. Can I get to it? Oh, did it. Run. How big's the Explodo's gonna be? Okay, yeah, it's gonna be a pretty sizable Explodo. Uh, welcome to space mining in the rim. It's really, really deadly. You'd think that we could hook that up to a Wi-Fi connection or something, but nope. Didn't hook it up to a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, these are Ethium crystals. At least that's what they've been calling them anyways. Uh, you mine them, and they're a crafting material. I don't have any blueprints or anything that I can craft yet. And there's also a modification system where you can fiddle with the affixes and whatnot on your gear. But I can use these same crafting materials that I've been mining off the sides of asteroids and the scrap that I've been getting from murdering guys and the plasma I've been harvesting from also murdering entire space bases full of outlaws uh, to hopefully do some upgrades once we get out of here. I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it anyways because I'm a nut job. Uh, we got a turret over there. Let's go ahead and light him up. There's a bulletproof container over there and a wiring kit. It doesn't look like these mines are going to be close enough to where they all light each other off. Go ahead and light these dudes up real quick. We are taking fire, though. A couple of drones coming on in. It looks like... Give me, yeah, let me give him a little bit of the old minigun there. There we go. A little bit of the old laser gatling. Let them feel it. We'll pull in those rockets right there. That's going to be an actual weapon that we can equip on our ship. But it's low quality, so I'm not that worried about it. And then we'll grab this white... Oh, okay, there's something... Oh, there's little guys waiting in ambush over here. Look at you guys. I did not realize there was little Joni the Dronies inside of there. So they've been wiped out. Uh, there are destructible areas on every single installation you will find for the most part. They are marked, obviously. They will be big red things that you can shoot on like the bases and on the installations and like on the planets. But sometimes if you look very carefully, there are things that are not marked red and are not marked explodable, but you can still explode them and get a ton of goodies. We found a quantum entangler. Okay, that's a new device. Devices give us special abilities. We've got a memory recalibrator right there, which is a very rare crafting material. And we got a mainframe component. Uh, with three mainframe components, I'm pretty sure we can upgrade our stats. And there's 200 bucks, too. So if that other stuff doesn't, you know, tickle your jiggly bits, maybe may, maybe the 300 bucks will. Like, who doesn't like 300 bucks? I love 300 bucks. I would like 300 bucks right now. That would be the best thing ever. But alas, I am 300 buckless. Uh, let's take a look and see... There's another installation over here, and it looks like we're inside the Wall of Mines. Looks like that blows up. Oh, it's their poo tank. It's got bio. I just blew up their septic tank. Gross. He fired missiles at me. I don't like that very much. 
Oh, just barely dodged that missile. We are taking a little tiny bit of a scuffing here from the defenses. Give him a little bit of something, something. Swap weapons real quick to something maybe hits a little bit harder. I do need these turrets to get gone. You can shoot their missiles out of the air too, by the way. Uh, this is one of those games where... Ooh, okay, radar dish went up nice. Did it drop anything? Doesn't look like it dropped anything. Blow that up, blow up another poo tank or two. Grab all their goodies out of there with my tractor beam. Looks like we earned ourselves a little bit of scrap metal. We earned ourselves a little bit of biomass. It does look like there's a wiring kit over there, so I'll take that. Uh, there are mining nodes and things all over these asteroids. You can get stuff like iron, you can get stuff like ethium or whatever. Uh, all things you probably want to look into. Also, keep an eye out for containers based on how powerful the scanners are that you have equipped. You may or may not be able to see them. Hey, there's an iron deposit right there. Let's go ahead and mine it real quick. Perfect. All of the sound effects in this game are done very well. I like all the weapons. They sound incredibly plosive, explodey, and uh, the graphics on them are quite good as well. The game comes with a full accompaniment of various lighting effects and things that just make the game look good. And, you know, looking good in Space Sims. What more could you ask for? I mean, those two things, they tend to go hand in hand. Is there like a... Okay. There's no bay over there. I just wanted to check. Sometimes... Uh, these little doors will open up and you can go inside of them, but it doesn't look like these ones are the opening up kind. I think we got everything over here, so maybe we get back to... Oh yeah, I forgot. I was going to take you guys over there. I found an escape pod in this sector while I was looking around, and the escape pod had the coordinates of some kind of rich mining hall. And it's that blue dot right there, so let's go check that out real quick. We'll fly on over to that side. So this is the warp right here. Uh, as you're flying around in the warp, things exist in this universe and you may inadvertently get like scan returns that are like, oh, there's a convoy over here, or there's an unidentified signal over here, or there's an unidentified installation over here. And you are totally within your rights to break off and just go check that stuff out. See, there's one right there, undiscovered site. Like there's all kinds of little things if you look around while you're inside warp space. And the game seems to have a lot of distractions and a lot of things that it wants you to take a look at while you're free roaming. And so it definitely seems to have kind of like, I don't know if you guys had this problem, but when I played Skyrim, I kind of had like sensory overload because there was too many little things you could get sidetracked with while you were playing the game. And so I never actually beat Skyrim. To this day, I've never beaten Skyrim. I have playthroughs that have like a hundred and some odd hours, but I've never beaten it because I just keep doing side stuff. Uh, so this is the remains of what I was told is a mining hall that was attacked by pirates. So we're going to take a look and see what we can find here. Wipe him out. Oh, we got a Weber. Light it off. Uh, you do have super abilities in this game called devices. Uh, what I just did right there was an EMP surge. It stuns and shuts down every ship inside of, like, I think a thousand meters of me uh, with a giant blast. You've also got a limit break in this game. If you look at the top left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see there's a, a flashing yellow thing. That's my limit break. As you kill enemies and as you fight, the meter fills up. And mine, I've been calling it unlimited power because it basically makes me shoot force lightning at everything around me and turn into a wrecking ball of just kind of positional and relative closeness damage. Anything that's near me gets fried with, you know, force lightning. And it's pretty awesome and it lasts forever. And it's a really, really nasty ability if you pop it in the middle of like an enemy fleet. Or let's say if you pop it uh, while going up against a frigate or a corvette, which do exist in this game. Hey, there's a generator right there. Okay, so we need to figure out a way to get through there. We'll release this stuff over here and clear some of the debris. There we go. And then I think I need to peek through there. And it seems like there's one on the other side too. Shield generators down. Power core dispenser. 
An unstable power core. Do I want the unstable power core? I don't know if I want it. I'm going to throw it. Maybe it'll blow up. It did indeed blow up. Did that deactivate anything over here? Oh, it just keeps spitting out more cores. Oh, there's a whole bunch of them in there. Okay, so with these power cores, I've got to plug them in somewhere like a key. The game is absolutely chock-a-block with these little sub-objectives that end up being like derelict crawling salvaging missions, basically. Oh, okay, so I've got to throw the socket through there. Gotcha. Oh, that was my bad. Didn't mean to do that. It's okay. We've got repulsor shields. It's fine. Carefully. There we go. We managed to do it on the first try. A bulletproof container. This is probably our hall right here. I don't know. If, can those be destroyed? They're not giving me a hit marker, so I don't think they can. But these guys right here... It looks like we've got ourselves a marksman's thermo gun. It's not as good as what we have, but it does have a considerable range to it. We can sell it if nothing else. But we did get an energy core that is vastly superior to the energy core that we are currently rocking. So I'll go ahead and slap that in real quick. And it looks like we've gotten credit for completing the shipwreck. I don't know if there's, like, more stuff around here. Oh, cool, we got a decal. Yeah, I didn't mention that. Our ships are fully customizable. Uh, you can repaint your ship, you can change the color of the windows, change the color of the LEDs and the RGB, you can put decals all over it to your heart's content if that's the kind of thing that you like. The last time I played the game two years ago, they had like three or four different ship models in the game that all did different stuff. I would guess two years later down the line they've probably got quite a few more ships in the game would be my estimate. I don't know that for 100% truth, but... In the really, really early access of the game, they had three or four ships that you could buy and swap in between, depending on your playstyle. If you wanted to be like a big gunship bruiser, or if you wanted to be like a smaller, more nimble fighter, there was like stealth vehicles. Uh, there were kind of slug it out big boy vehicles. Uh, I don't think in this game you're going to be able to fly a frigate or like a corvette. It seems like the game is largely confined. Uh, to smaller hulls like fighters and whatnot, like focused on fighters. But you can fight against bigger ships, and in fact, I think Everspace, the original Everspace, is probably one of the only games to ever properly introduce the size disparity between a corvette and a frigate. I rem or, I'm sorry, a corvette and a fighter. I remember in the first game, there's a scene that you're playing through that can randomly happen because it's a roguelike, where you get jumped by a corvette. And I remember my mind just being boggled how enormous the Corvette was by comparison to my fighter. And it's one of those intense moments from the first game that I'll always remember. Let's go ahead and jump jet on out of here. Uh, we'll see if our jump drive, we'll probably stop and see if we find anything interesting along the way. Maybe we'll go do some base upgrades back at Rhodia. I don't know. I mean, there's something over here. Let's go over there. Let's see what that is. Sorry, I've got video game ADHD like crazy. Like, I just have to take a look at everything. Over in Union Bridge, there's a shop where we can engage in trade. Just in case you're the kind of person that likes to flip goodies in between locations. Ooh, we're fighting in upper orbit, huh? Oh, yeah, there it is. And as you can see, the planet is actually in the background right now, which is pretty cool. Looks like we've got a pilot or a pirate installation over here. Once again, once again, surrounded by a pretty thick flotilla of mines. Which has me a little bit worried. Those drones, okay. I'm going to wipe out their turret real quick. The game does have like five different difficulty settings, by the way. Just in case you find the game too easy or too hard. Uh, there's everything from narrative modes to ultra hard mode difficulties. Just... Up to you and your preference. It seems like they've gone out of their way to include a lot of options in that regard for different types of players of different capabilities and also different skill sets. Uh, copper, actually, inside of here. So this looks like an illegal copper mining operation. It's not actually. Oh, okay. That's a mine. That hurt like crazy. I hated it.
let's go ahead and hang tight and not move. This is kind of like stepping on a mine and escape from Tarkov. Just stop what you're doing and stop moving until your health comes back, you know what I mean? And then walk again. I don't really want to target these guys. GMB are the company that I used to work for before we got found by the space military. Before uh, space Northrop Grumman found us and was like, We want our clone property back! What do we have going on over here? Those kind of look destructible to me for a second. That's a moving piece of debris. What is it useful for? We have a power core socket over there. Where's the power core? Ah, there we go. Power core's over here. Is there anything destructible over here? Doesn't look like it. Let's just grab the power core and we'll be on our way. But the game is just full of these little exploration zones that exist in between the storyline missions. And I'll be honest, I'm not even that far into the storyline because I just keep getting sidetracked checking out these little locations and stacking loot. Uh, we'll go ahead and put that in right there and see what it leads us towards. A big red button. Um, did I do good? Huh. Looks like it opens that door over there. That's what I may need to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, my boost ability got me here before the door closed. But... What is in here that we want? There's a bulletproof container back there. So that closes. What am I even looking at right there? It didn't look to me like there was anything inside of there. Hold on. I'm going to go check out this container real quick. What are these? It's just a floating container out in the void? Huh. I mean, I'm not going to turn down free stuff in like a magical sensor that gives me more firepower and thus makes me deal more damage. All right, we've also got a coil gun over here that's got better range than our previous coil gun. But I'd rather not fiddle with it. I wonder if hitting the button over there and then jetting into that other spot maybe, like, ejected that or something. I don't really know. Not sure, but I'm going to go get this iron deposit real fast because you can never have enough iron. And then from there, I guess we'll go back to our main base and maybe you'll see like a little narrative portion so that you can get a feel for like the narrative value of the game and whether or not it's well acted for yourself. I've been kind of like editing out storyline stuff as it comes up because I wanted to focus on gameplay. But you know, that's the way it goes. Seven more iron. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Uh, that looks like we may adjust your course I was going to say, we may have to go around. Objects exist in this universe. Some planets you are capable of landing on. There is in-atmo fighting in this game, in case you were wondering. A distress call. You just got to do me, huh? You just got to do me like that. All right, let's go to the distress call. I'm sure it's not bandits pretending to, to be someone in distress. I'm sure it's a perfectly valid distress call. I mean, I'm not a mechanic. Help out by transferring a small nanobot to the freelance freighter. Oh, I can do that, dude. I have nanobots. I got plenty of new news, dude. You want my new news? All right, let's see what kind of new news we can give this guy. Any way I can thank you. Just pass it on. Maybe we can make the DMZ a better place. Can't do this without shields. I was going to say a hug, dude. You just cheated me out of a hug. You spoke too quickly, Adam. All right? We could have gotten a hug out of that. I could have gotten hugged by a fanciful alien. How many people get to get hugged by fanciful aliens in the far-off frontiers of space? Not that many, and usually if you do, you gotta pay for it at, like, a divey space station where the floors are sticky. I almost got an alien hug without stickiness on the bottom of my boots. Deeply disappointed with you. Uh, you can do banditry in this game if you want to. I haven't tested the system out too much, but if we go over to this GMB freighter over here, I virtually guarantee you it'll have cargo pods on it. At least they did in the first game. Yeah. And if you shoot the cargo pods, they should detach those little crates right there. You will have to deal with their retinue. Their retinue doesn't look particularly strong, but I'm one of those people that feels bad when I do bad things in video games. Because I was raised super religious, and so doing bad things, like, I was given a strong sense of personal guilt 
as a gift from my parents, okay? And it persists well into my life now. Just a real strong sense of personal guilt, even when it comes to the realms of the imaginary, like space video games. I can't be mean to NPCs or anything, otherwise I feel bad. I don't know. I've never been able to outgrow it. Like, I know that it's imaginary. I know it's not real. I know that the space entities and the knights and the wizards in the games that I consume and play, I know that they don't have actual feelings. They don't have an emotional state. They're just constructs of code. Just various functions being executed. But still, I feel bad when I'm mean to them, and I feel bad when I do criminal things. I just... I don't know, man. Now that we've fixed all the beanbags, we should have a nice warm welcome waiting for us back at base. And we should also probably be able to take care of some upgrades to give our character some perks that's going to make our life pop in the galaxy a little bit better. Uh, this game does have functioning economies, in case you were wondering. Different systems produce different things, and you are more likely to get those things in the systems that you're doing your missions. If you, you know, like, so if a system produces clothing and you're shooting a lot of bandits, there's a reasonably solid chance bandits will drop clothing, like that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's a good idea to maybe hold on to all your trade goods and transfer them to other systems as you fight along. That guy right there got to go. It's like a, it's an explosive anemone, dude. All right. There's ain monies out here. You gotta be careful about the ain monies. Iron and 85 bucks, right next to my base. Oh, there's some ethium over here too. Let's go get the ethium. I got real bad woo piece of candy syndrome in this game, dude. Like I could have accomplished so much in the couple hours that I've played at this point. Instead, I just fly around as ooh piece of candy, ooh piece of candy. Oh, there's crystals like in my. Oh, look, a bandit base. Oh, that's cool. There's a puzzle over here. Oh, distress signal? Sure, I'll go after that. Check this out. While going through some old junk, I found some protective plating for your ship. Might give you an edge in an upcoming fight. I put it in our storage. Nice. I I enjoy not getting blown the hell up. So I'll take it. So it looks like the plating's over here, and we actually don't even have anything in our plating slot. There you go. So now we've got armor. I wondered how long it'd take for you to look me up. They say it was a mutiny, that you killed your superior officer. I didn't kill him, but I didn't stop it from happening either. That war, the things we all did, it wasn't right. My friends and I, we had a plan to get out and make it all mean something. But Voight was hell-bent on stopping us. And there I was, thinking plans were for fools. Never said I wasn't one myself. Look, I know how hard it can be to trust someone. Maybe you'll find it easier if we focus on fixing up your friend and see where it goes from there. It's really all I'm asking. All right, let's start by having you head over to the Union Bridge Station and buy something called a Prime Sense STA. That's an old but untrackable scanner module. With it, we can finally see the entire system without the fleet seeing us back. And then? We use a scanner to look for a medical station. We loot the place, beef up our med bay, and let the medical AI patch up your friend. What if there are no medical stations around? Cedo isn't that small. We're bound to come across something. I was hoping for something more solid. Well, all right. What's the name of that scanner? Uh, Prime Sense STA? Correct. Have some faith, and I promise it'll be worth your while. All right, so we've slapped our armor on, which now means we have the three magical bars that we were promised. I do need to go to here, and I need to combine those into a mainframe expansion. That way I can level up my character, or at least alternately level up my character. I believe we go to our ship menu. Yeah, I've got a mainframe expansion right there. I feel like we're doing pretty good on firepower. Like, I feel like stuff dies when I shoot it. Like, our time to kill feels very fast. I don't know if I lucked out and just got a sick weapon super early on in the game, but I'm actually more interested in, like, more shields, maybe? Shield damage reduction. Oh, that didn't help out that much. But it does look like I can actively adjust these as frequently as I want, so that's pretty cool, too. I was actually hoping for just net shields. That was it. Like, I was hoping for something that 
gave me a lot more shields, but I guess a 0.2% doesn't seem worth it to me for right now, but I'm guessing it increases the multiplier on that stat that you're getting as a function of leveling up, because all these stats increase when you level up. So my starting firepower at level 1 was 21, and now at level 3 it's almost 70. And so I'm guessing the points you put in here will give bigger and bigger dividends the further on into the game you are. We'll just go for an HP increase of 1% for right now, something that keeps us a little bit more safe and tucked in. So this right here is the customization of your ship's physical appearance. Uh, as you fly throughout the galaxy, you will find decals, you will find paint jobs, you will find RGB colors, things like that that you can play around with. You can decide how glossy you want it to be. You can have metallic finishes. You can have, you know, just normal flat matte finishes, things of that nature. I don't know if I have... Oh, my God, that's pretty blue right there, man. That's, uh, that's pretty beefy blue. I think it's talking about my engines, though. So the main thruster can be blue or it can be orange. I haven't unlocked any other colors yet. Yeah, so it's just got to kind of, like, pick and choose, I guess. What about my window tint? Did I get any new window tints? I did get a new window tint right there that's green. I like that better. Did I get any new emissive lights? It's pretty much just blue and yellow lights. Okay. That's fine. And it doesn't look like I've really unlocked that many more paint jobs just yet. I, I think the only ones I've found is like the window tint so far while I was flying around, but... That's the customization, and it kind of gives you a reason to go out and explore. My experience has been you find the paint jobs and whatnot from doing, like, side objectives, basically. On top of crafting materials and things. Uh, these over here are the abilities that you've unlocked. These are effectively spells that are on a cooldown. I've got a boost that, like, teleports me forward super fast. I've got the EMP burst. But you can also use device upgrades to upgrade these and make them stronger. And so if you wanted this to be like a beefier, nastier ability, I could do like so, and its radius gets bigger. And I do like that ability, actually. I think that ability is pretty good for keeping the enemy all up off of my cojones. And so, like, I'll upgrade it. I'll throw some points at it. Union Bridge. All right. Let's jump out a drive. There's a distress call trying to suss me off this main storyline quest, but I can't do it. I'll just be too disappointed with myself if I don't go for it. Let's just pull into Union Bridge and kind of see how this thing goes and see if we can pick up our prime sense. All right, so what are we looking at here? Looks like we need to dock at the trading outpost. It is indeed a trading outpost that I have been in before. So we'll kind of pull in tight right here. There is a socket over here, but I haven't been able to figure out exactly where I get the energy sphere from in order to put it in there to open up that. Oh, I guess there's an energy sphere dispenser kind of over there somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. Maybe it's like down in a mine or something. Uh, it looks like the dispenser is in an old dilapidated. I mean, it looks like a concrete factory to me. There was a concrete factory in my hometown and it looked just like this thing. We called it the castle. It was way up on a hill, like right next to where I live. It's gone now, though. I guess I forgot about the castle. It used to be up there. It's not up there anymore. They tore it down probably 20 years ago, but... All right, so let's slap this energy sphere where it needs to go. No, it disappeared, dude! It's limited in duration! No, dude. I hate my life. I'm just going to dock at the station. I'll buy like a Red Bull or something and I'll feel better. <laughs> Weirdly enough, Red Bull is like my favorite energy drink. Just the oh, default that's basic. That's the pre-war model. Quite rare. But I do have one in stock. How much is it? 4,200. 4,000? And 200. Yes. Say, you don't happen to be a contractor, do you? Uh, no, I'm just uh, into tech like that. That's all. That's too bad. I could have paid you 2.5k if you'd done a little job for me. All you would need to do is deliver a small package to a dear customer of mine. Really? That's it? Will you do it? Sure. Why not? That doesn't sound very committed. I would be grateful if you'd let me take this job. Good. You'll find the package at the abandoned station nearby. I'll give you further instructions once you're there. 
the search area. So file the seed container at abandoned station. Yeah, nothing good is going to happen here. I'm calling it now. Although earlier, I was kind of wondering what this was doing out here. I was in the zone earlier, and I flew over to look at this, and, like, there was, like, one or two things I could blow up, but, like, there wasn't really a ton of loot. Oh, it's not. Five. One of them's a pretty nasty viper. I knew it. Don't let them get away. I just want to catch that thing and shoot it. There we go. Got him. Who else is firing at me? You? All right, you're next. If you didn't want to be next, you shouldn't have shot at me. Give me the recharge booster real quick. I'm not rich enough to turn down free loot yet. Oh my god, I'm getting shot in the armor. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and... Dude, what is hitting me right now? Oh my goodness gracious. It's a good thing I leveled up, dude. I was getting flattened until I leveled up. Oh, sweet, dude. I got another device upgrade point. Sweet. Good for me. Hooray. What is that? And why does it have a targeting reticle on it? Is there any more loot laying around? I still hear things exploding, but... We seem to be kind of safe, maybe. Oh, yeah, there was a secret smuggler bay down here, dude. This game is full of secret areas, by the way. It doesn't always mark them. For example, I was flying around earlier, and I was on the site of an asteroid, and there was just a spot on the asteroid that had red cracks on it, and I was like, what if I fire a missile at this? And when I fired a missile at it, it actually opened up a passageway that allowed me to get inside the asteroid, and I got a whole bunch of, like, crystals that I could use for crafting from it. And so keep your eyes open. It doesn't always mark the things that are lootable. Uh, we've got a crystal diode right there. And then we've also got a booster. It's better than the one we've got. It gives us 9% more speed and 3% more recharge. I'll take it. Why is that one still green? That's weird. How odd. That one's red, but that one doesn't seem to have turned red when we finished looting it like the other ones did. Weird. Uh, we still need that container, right? Let's go grab this container. See if I can't, like, weasel my way up in here. Can't find it anywhere. What ship types did the group fly? Apart from that elite viper, there were two madcaps, a scout, and a sniper drone. Just as I thought. I hate those guys. They pestered me to sell them the wares, but I turned them down. They didn't happen to have left their address by any chance. The Viper pilot has his lair in Rhodia orbit. I would be very grateful if you could get my package back. This will cost you. How about a raise up to 3.5k? Sounds fair. I'm on it. I do like that we don't even need to do this mission. Like, if we had the money, and we do, we could just buy the damn thing and skip this entire side mission. It's very, it's very mercenary. It's very kind of like space opera -y, I guess. It's just like you have the ability to not do or do side quests as you feel they are necessary. I kind of like that. We've got 16. Dude, I'm flying with so much liquor in the car. Also got rockets and the marksman thermo gun. Oh, yeah, I wanted to level up some perks. So, like, I want my repairs to be cheaper. So I will indeed throw 2,000 credits at that. I will throw some of my iron at it. I will throw some of my scrap at it. I don't have power casings, but I do have the cooling unit. So I got to keep an eye out for power casings. I only have two out of the three crystal diodes for that one. Do I have five power cells? I have two power cells. So unfortunately, I can't afford any of the station upgrades right now. So in a non-crafting rage and an inability to slap two rocks together to make something fun in space, I'm going to fly off and go murder some pirates. I'm just going to murder pirates until I feel better, until the feeling of cookies and cream ice cream flows through my veins. Like, you ever, you know that feeling you get, like, when you're eating, like, some Moose Tracks ice cream and you're, like, watching a comfort show like The Office and you just, like, feel better about your life? Oh, is it just me? <laughs> like, like, that one brief moment the power of ice cream compels you? and you're not like worried about any other stuff happening, 
Uh, that guy is the level known as Senko, and he looks kind of scary. I mean, I guess he's kind of coming over here, so I guess I'll, like, shoot him or something. Did the send you? Yeah. Now don't try anything funny. Just return what you stole, and I'll let you go. Never. They say that I'm just like everyone else. But with this, I'll prove them wrong. I will finally stand out. Stand out among the crowd. I warned you. Hey, it's me. Did the package contain some Viridian paint by any chance? Yes, that's it. The recipient is already waiting for you at the outer rim. You know that Viridian products are illegal. I'm sorry, but I'm not paying you so well to ask questions. Point taken. Fair enough. You'd think Adam would know better. We are in space, on the rim of the periphery. There is no law and order out here. Things can be as illegal as they want to be. And, uh, I don't think it's really going to affect too much. Iron deposit over there. I mean, is there really anything over here? I could go through all these wrecks and stuff, and there's usually some kind of loot in there. But I kind of just want to get my paycheck, dude. I feel like I've earned a paycheck. Let's go get a paycheck. Alright, so back inside Cito, where the bandits get deleted. I'm supposed to meet you have the package yeah here this paint job will finally make us stand out they will see that we're not like everyone else am I the only one who prefers to not stand out around here time to head back to the trader cool apparently I also had to make the package delivery I was wondering why it was taking me back to the wrong system this game has lots of cool little UI elements too like a side quest is a blue quest a yellow quest is a main quest but if you have a blue quest and a yellow quest that you can simultaneously turn in at the same person, like they have multiple jobs, it combines on the UI into like a yellow and blue unified icon. Like there's lots of little details like that. It's pretty good. They're an elite Viper pilot? Yeah, they're quite the raggle taggle group. It's really hard not to like them, isn't it? They're exactly the same as the guys you just made me fight. Nah, there's a big difference. Return to my shop and you'll understand. Alright, let's drop this thing off, and then we'll figure out a way to close out this video. We earned our money, though, and you guys deserve to see the payoff for the cash that's been dropped. Uh, let's go ahead and swing on in. Zip zap, there it is. Excellent job. Here are your credits. Great. Oh, and one more thing. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. When the two Viper pilots came by to order the paint, the first one just barged in, slammed his money on the counter, and made his proposition. While the other one began by asking if it was okay for him to dock here. When I said yes, he thanked me. Can you believe that? That's, uh, amazing. Life out here is cruel and violent. Barely anyone treats their neighbor as their equal. So just hearing a friendly thank you every once in a while means something to me. Sometimes it's the small things that really make us stand out. Uh, yeah, right. Well, thanks for the creds, I guess. You're very much welcome, my friend. Cool. We just got paid. Uh, I do need to buy... Oh, cool, I got a new decal. A little outlaw decal. Uh, decal. I need to buy the STA. So there it is, and we got that for... System scanner coming right up. Say, do you know about any medical stations nearby? Hmm. The closest is probably the one at Prescott Starbase in Union. And here in Cedo? You're kidding, right? Out here, no one ever cared about infrastructure like that. Not even during the war. I understand. Thanks anyway. No problem. 
What's that cargo unit do right there? It gives me four cargo slots? Where does it go? I'm gonna buy it. What slot does it go? Oh my god, I've got more inventory space. This is the best day of my life. Alright, so we'll drop off all this crap because I'm tired of carrying it around with me. I've got way too many things in my cargo hold and they all need to go. I've got clothing and liquor. None of them are really worth a bundle in this system. They're both kind of mid-grade. The game makes it really easy to trade, in case you were wondering. So if it's red in this sidebar, it's overpriced. If it's green, it's underpriced. The opposite is true over here. So if you sell something in your inventory that's red, it means you're getting ripped off. If you sell something that's yellow, it means it's an average price. You sell something that's green over here, it means you're getting like a great price. Oh, he's got the power cells for the tractor beam too. He's also got some better armor plating. Ooh, he's got some ramen too, dude. I'm about that ramen life. Let's get on it, dude. Slice some spam up in that bad boy. Poof. But yeah, this is Everspace 2, a game I've been eagerly awaiting for years at this point. I haven't noticed anything that's jumped out and made me annoyed with it so far. It combines a lot of the elements of things that I'm interested in, that is to say Diablo, uh, open world space games, fighter pilot games. It, it's got a lot of things that I enjoy happening with it all at once. I think really the safest way to go with this is... Did you play the first Everspace? Because the flight model is nearly identical in this game to the first Everspace. The only difference is uh, they've moved around a whole lot of the margins in order to facilitate an open world full of like procedural objectives that are interspersed with like normal narrative objectives as well. If that's the kind of thing you're interested in, you don't mind an arcadey flight model, I feel like the game's got all the parts in the right spot. And since Everspace 1 is one of my favorite games of all time, like, it just made sense. This is just more of the same for me, but in an open world where I can do whatever I want, and with the graphics touched up and looking great. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile of find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we've got Everspace 2. I will be streaming this game all this week. I would love to have you. Please join me. And maybe that'll help you fill out even more whether or not it's the game for you. We'll do a fresh run. You can see the narrative you missed before the beginning of this video to put pieces back together. It'll be a grand old time. I'll catch you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. But for now, it's time for me to go. Bye, folks.